Dear colleagues, thank you once again for the possibility to discuss with you the present and future of Ukrainian science. Um, I also would like to thank Tatiana for her thorough presentation where he, she actually covered uh, the most parts of the functionality of Scopus, of Cyval, of the um, different kind of metrics we use inside. So here I can focus more on how uh, do we see what happens in uh, Ukrainian science and uh, how we can compare it to uh, the other countries, what uh, trends do they see uh, in science in general and uh, in Ukrainian science. But before I will go deeper into this, I will, would like to speak a little bit on the second part of uh, the topic, so about Scopus. So, so actually first let me introduce Scopus to those who maybe is not working. At the moment it's the largest citation and abstraction database with over uh, 22,000 uh, records, uh, uh, 22,000 serial titles with 55 active Ukrainian titles indexed with uh, more than 61 million records and these are not only journals, these are both uh, books uh, and conference proceeding which can give you the thorough overview of all the important uh, scientific projects conducted all over the world. Scopus is all-in-one database without any additional archives or uh, country uh, databases so that every source which is indexed in Scopus has absolutely the same rights, the same functionality, the same metrics as any other. Uh, and uh, that is very important in case you are thinking about indexation of your uh, journals in Scopus. Uh, at the moment Scopus is widely used for evaluation of science both uh, in university rankings which were already shown in the previous presentation such as Times Higher Education, such as um, QS World Ratings. It is also widely used in um, different uh, organization for uh, uh, evaluation of science such as National Science Foundation since last year the uh, program, uh, the European program Horizon 2020 also uses the data of Scopus so it's used in many many other countries all around the world. And maybe you've seen this picture in the previous presentation. This is the content selection and advisory board which provides the fully transparent process of evaluation journals to be indexed in Scopus. We have very clear criteria which are uh, published online both uh, in our, uh, on our English, on our international websites, it's also on our local website. And we are here to uh, help you to give any kind of consultation you need to make your journal uh, more uh, prepared to be indexed in Scopus. And further I will show how uh, does our collaboration within almost 10 years helps uh, Ukrainian journalists to be in Scopus, how many of them are already there, how many new we index, for example, this year, uh, etc. Uh, let's look how the Ukrainian science is represented in Scopus. And here you see the publication of her. Uh, uh, it was published in Odessa in uh, year. 1829, and that is the first publication in Scopus uh, which uh, corresponds to Ukrainian science. So it's more than, it's almost 200 years, and absolutely any user of Scopus has this full data, has all their archives, so you can uh, evaluate the science from the very beginning, from the first journal publication until the present day. These are more than 184 publications for all the time which were published in Ukraine and are indexed in Scopus. Uh, only in last year these are almost 
10, uh, almost 9,000 publications. These are more than 30,000 author profiles which are created automatically. So if at least one publication of some particular author from Ukraine is indexed in Scopus, then there is an author profile uh, created automatically. More uh, than uh, 280 uh, organization profiles, affiliations and 55 active titles uh, from Ukraine. Uh, so what, what can we say as, as an overview? Uh, we see that the number of publications is growing and the, the number of new authors which uh, contribute to Ukrainian science is also growing, but the field-weighted citation impacts, impact in comparison with the uh, world average of one is still lower, so these are not the, uh, mostly not the uh, top-rated publications, they are uh, a bit below the average level, so that is the, the uh, way where the uh, researchers can look at, so how to make their publications more uh, cited, so that, that the question is not only to be indexed, but to be published in the journals where they, their publications can really be cited, where their publication is uh, in international language, in English, etc. Uh, we can look through the categories uh, uh, which uh, can divide the, the scientific publications and we see that the number of publications in physics and astronomy is much higher than in every other um, subject criteria, but the only one which shows the uh, field-weighted citation impact higher than uh, world average is met. Uh, and all the other need to be more cited to be to, to get the uh, world average level. Um, let's look at the publication leaders among their organization of Ukraine. Of course, uh, the biggest one is the National Academy of Science, which includes all the uh, institutes and all uh, the other scientific centers of the National Academy of Science. And then we see the uh, university, uh, the national university uh, named Taras Shevchenko, uh, then Kharkiv National University, um, uh, etc. So you can check what, what position holds any of the um, uh, organization. And then we will look a bit in detail how this data change through years. So here you can see dynamics. So actually, how changes the number of publications, and we see that um, uh, the uh, Tarasovchenko University shows the very good uh, growth through years since 1996. Uh, other organizations maybe not so uh, high uh, growth rates, but if we will see it from the other side, if we will look at uh, the, uh, their start position as 100%, so that everyone starts from 100%, then we will see the other leaders. So who changed a lot their publication activity from uh, 1996, so uh, 20 years ago, and we will see other leaders uh, like Suma State University, uh, like Polytechnic University, uh, and from the other side we will see that, for example, the publication activity of National Academies of Science didn't change since uh, within the last 20 years. So it's, it's absolutely the same. So as it was like about 100%, then it's still here. Uh, we can see other kind of uh, data within our uh, 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 solutions like Saival, Scopus, for example, we can see how, what is the correlation of quality of publications, means field-weighted citation impact, and the uh, collaboration impact. And here we can see that uh, if the publication is written in collaboration with international authors, which represent not only uh, Ukraine, but other countries, then it's always cited more. 
So that is also the way where the researchers can look for, they can uh, use the uh, data of Scopus to search for the other researchers who conduct the same kind of research to uh, do joint publications. Let's go wider and look at the country level. Uh, let's look at how uh, Ukraine performs in comparison with neighboring countries uh, such as uh, Romania, such as Hungary, uh, the violet line is for Ukraine, uh, Belarus, uh, Slovakia and uh, three of Baltic states. So it, and you can see that uh, it's quite near to, to Hungary in terms of the number of publication indexed in Scopus. But if we will go to the quality of publication, which can be uh, represented by the field weighted citation impact, then the level is quite low. It's even lower than in Belarus. Uh, still, that is not the same in all the subject areas. If we will go deeper in subject area, we can find the ones uh, where Ukraine is definitely uh, performs much better than the other ones. For example, we can go to electronic, optical and magnetic materials of material science, the area which is um, uh, very near to the atomic physics where uh, Ukraine is number one among these countries. We also can go to inorganic chemistry where Ukraine performs much better than any other neighboring countries. So that's not the same for all the areas. There are areas where uh, you have definitely very high expertise, you have competences uh, to be represented on the world level. And we can go deeper in these competences. These are very small scientific clusters where uh, Ukraine is among the leaders all over the world. And there were 11 competences on the country level in 2010. Uh, you added two more com competences within four years, so there is a good growth. Uh, and we can look to what subject uh, uh, they correspond, and also we can look how do they change. So whether this competency is growing, and whether the relative publication share of Ukraine is growing. And so if the competency is uh, on here on the right upper corner, then it's growing both in the world and the, uh, the uh, number of publications of Ukraine, the share is growing also. There are not too many of them, but there are uh, strong uh, distinct competencies in physics. Uh, also some joint pro projects with uh, CERN, where Ukraine also participates. And uh, going deeper in any competency, we can see what authors actually uh, brings this competency to the country and how their research can be um, described by the keywords. And here we see that the distinct competency of um, coherence, coherence, polarization, uh, and the other keywords which describes it, actually uh, uh, is provided by Chernovtsi National University and uh, corresponds very good with the world trends which are in electronic, optical and magnetic materials all over the world. So the competency they have is quite uh, in the uh, same area where in general, the world trend of this area of science is going. So that is uh, one of the key areas where the science in general can be focused on. Uh, let's look at the collaboration pattern of Ukrainian research. That's another area we can look uh, at. And here we can uh, see what are the countries uh, you collaborate most uh, in publication indexed in Scopus. And through the years, uh, we can see that still the number of uh, publications, joint publications with Russian scientists is growing, uh, instead of all political differences. And there is also growing the number of publications with Poland. So in 2011, Poland was only the fourth country um, after uh, Germany and United States, and now they're on the second place. Uh, 
Uh, the, the other interesting pattern we can look like is the language of publications. And we can see here that uh, your scientists are really trying to go internationally and trying to publish as much as possible uh, in English. So we here see the growth of English publication where the number of uh, publications in Russian and Ukrainian are quite stable. And that is a very good sign. That means that these publications are available not only to the local uh, scientists, but they are available all over the world and that they uh, can be uh, cited by the scientist where he is. Uh, and here that's important to show the journals which are indexed in, spot, in Scopus. Uh, here we see the SGR ranking, uh, which is um, independent on, of the uh, subject area, so we can uh, compare journals from different areas. Here, for example, we have um, journals from medicine, from mathematics, uh, from material science, uh, from social science, and uh, with the uh, normalization we use in SGR, we can compare them without uh, thinking from what area they come. So, and we here see the good growth of this uh, uh, metrics for almost all the journals we have. That's that's uh, just the uh, uh, top uh, seven or eight journals. And the number of journals is growing. Uh, if in 2011 there were so 43 titles. 43 Ukrainian titles, uh, now that's already 55 titles. Here are the new journals which are indexed in Scopus, which are actually not uh, seen in Scopus at the moment, but uh, specifically for th this event, I checked the, at uh, Content Selection and Advisory Board, which journals got the positive uh, vote to be indexed in Scopus. They will appear within this year. And these are Journal, journal of International Studies, Journal of Nanosystems, Eastern European Journal of Enterprise Technologies, uh, Journal of uh, uh, Radioactive Medicine and uh, Radiobiology, and Bank and Bank System. These are the new journals to be indexed in Scopus since this year. And we are fully open to provide any needed service for journals to uh, to consult them how to be indexed in Scopus. That's fully transparent, that's uh, an electronic procedure, all the requirements are uh, uh, fully clear and uh, in case you have any question how to be indexed in Scopus, you can reach us um, uh, during the coffee break or later. Uh, so speaking more general, not only about Scopus, but also uh, on the Elsevier position within Ukraine. So we see Ukraine as a strategic partner. We are here for um, almost 10 years. And we uh, recognize your commitment to support science, to go worldwide, to uh, work on visibility of scientific uh, research. And we support not only with sub subscription, that's a very small part of our partnership because we work together on uh, publishing of your authors in Elsevier journals. We'll speak about this. Uh, we provide advisory service uh, for journals on Scopus title evaluation process. Uh, we provide free reference manager and academic social network with over 4 million users to showcase your research even if it's not published in Scopus or other databases. Trainings, author webinars, um, next uh, Monday, 12th of April, uh, there will be our uh, publishing director from biochemistry who will uh, give an author workshop in uh, National University of Taras Shevchenko in the library, so everyone is welcome to speak with our uh, one of our publishing directors who can share his deep knowledge on how the journals of Elsevier are being published, what mistakes do authors do when they uh, submit their papers. So that's a very unique event uh, and uh, 
you will visit only two scientific organizations in Ukraine, National Academy of Science and the uh, uh, Shevchenko University, so you are welcome. And I will also uh, commit to the words of uh, uh, Mitro Chiberkos about Scopus Award Ukraine, which will be on uh, 20th of May, and we fully support uh, the initiatives of uh, the Ministry to uh, um, give awards to the best Ukrainian scientists. Elsevier uh, is a company with a very long history. So, uh, firstly, it was created more than 400 years ago, but uh, the modern company operates more than 130 years. And we uh, look forward in the future with a horizon of 50 and hundreds of years. And uh, so our future is fully um, tied with scientists. At the moment, we are the biggest provider of scientific data of all the sets of solutions, not only Science Direct or Scopus, which you know, but these are also specific solutions for any kind of uh, scientific areas, more than 200 solutions in general, uh, within all the disciplines of uh, science. I will also speak a little bit about uh, how we work together with the uh, Ukrainian scientists with showcasing their research, with uh, publishing of uh, their articles in um, Elsevier journals, which are all um, on the one platform, on Science Direct platform, which is open in terms of bibliographic data, and uh, it is visited uh, by researchers from over 150 countries. We have uh, 30 million users per month, so that's quite a good platform to showcase your research. And uh, every year we see more and more requests for publications. So, for example, in 2014 there were more than a million, uh, million uh, uh, 200 articles submitted, but only 350 of them were published, so it's one fourth. It's quite a huge work we do to select the very best our articles so that our colleagues uh, from uh, Thomson Reuters doing journal citations report ranked 62 of our uh, journals as the top journals in the, uh, in the categories of uh, journal citations report of over 232 categories. And we see that Science Direct contributes every year more and more to Ukrainian research. If we will see that to her, um, 2010 as 100%, we see that the number of publications of Ukrainian scientists in Elsevier journals grows. That also grows the number of references they use from our journals and the number of citations coming to their publications from the other Elsevier journals is growing. So we are working more and more together. And we can see that the subject of documents which are referenced by your researchers, so these are the publications in the Scopus, many, many references goes to our journals. If we see, if we look at um, top scientific areas for Ukraine, such as where they publish quite a lot, such as biochemistry, such as chemistry, such as engineering and material science, more than one third of reference go to Elsevier journals. So there is a huge demand in use of full text articles of uh, Elsevier because it's impossible to cite using only abstract. The uh, researcher have, should have access to this article to use them fully and uh, to do better research. And the uh, Ukrainian research which use Science Direct, we have the subscription and National uh, uh, Academy of Science, they use the articles from all over the world. That's in the last five years there were more than one million downloads by Ukrainian researchers on the platform of Elsevier. And the number of publications of Ukrainian researchers is Elsevier is also growing from year to year. And what is more important, 
if we will look at any other publisher where Ukrainian authors uh, submit their articles, only Elsevier can get, give them the very best level of journals and uh, bring them to the very best uh, impact of this research. So the highest field-weighted citation impact is uh, much more than the average level of the world. So you can think of what journal you will select uh, and maybe go to Elsevier. The other thing is that we uh, work a lot with patents and we also uh, can see how many patents of Ukrainian researchers were, um, how many uh, uh, publications in Elsevier journals were cited by patents, so what are the key words they used, so how this is connected to the potential uh, commercial effects of these publications. Just uh, a pair of uh, examples of the publications in Elsevier of your authors uh, with the highest citation. Yeah, that's quite new publications, so for example, 2011, uh, almost 400 uh, times cited. Uh, that is the publication of um, the Department of Biochemistry and Bi Biotechnology, National University um, of Vasil Stefaniuk, Ivano Frankivsk. A publication in Biosensors and Bioelectronics of Kharkiv National University of Radio Electronics, cited over cited for, uh, 40 times. Uh, Coordination Chemistry Review published the review uh, prepared by Ukrainian scientists uh, from National Taras Shevchenko University. And we also have good social uh, science journals where our colleagues from um, uh, Kiev Mohila Academy publish and also this, uh, their publications are cited quite well. And these, these publications are seen all over the world. So, more than 4 million times these publications were downloaded from uh, Science Direct by the other researchers. So that uh, actually makes them visible. And that makes them cited. They are cited quite a lot. Altogether they are cited almost uh, 10, almost 100,000 times. So, lots of uh, graphics, but just to give some takeaways. So here we are to provide a full range of leading information solutions for scientists. And we do this for over uh, 135 years, and we will do this next 135 years. For us, Ukraine is a long-term strategic uh, partnership. We are here for more than 10 years. We do a lot. Uh, uh, besides subscription, we support any scientific initiative uh, of ministry, of universities, we help with trainings, author workshops, any consultant service or any other uh, joint projects. So, uh, in case you have any ideas, any initiatives, just reach us. Uh, with that, I, I would like to uh, conclude, in case you will have any questions to ask, just just reach us. Thank you very much. If there are any questions, 